Hello everybody, welcome back to my TV review series. Today we'll be discussing Ozark Season 2. So I'll give you the typical thing. I will give you my overall graded impressions. So after I give you my overall graded impressions, if you have not seen the show and want to see the show, turn the video off after that because there will be spoiler alerts. So I want to talk about more in-depth plot synopsis and character development. Major theme question marks. There's not really, not really much major themes, to, many major themes to talk about. And just a crime drama show. So again, going off, I'll read you the, the overview. Um, getting blown up about closing on this stupid house right now. Closing information for your real estate transaction. Sick. I'm doing YouTube. So again, the overview. Created by Billy Dubuque, the accountant, the judge, this drama series stars Jason Bateman as Marty Burr, a financial planner who relocates his family from Chicago to a summer resort community in the Ozarks. With wife Wendy and their two kids in tow, Marty is on the move after a money laundering scheme goes wrong, forcing him to pay off a substantial debt to a Mexican drug lord in order to keep his family safe. While the bird's fate hangs in the balance, the dire circumstances force the fractured family to reconnect. So overall impressions, a ton of low light scenes. I was at least prepared for this season. Uh, every time I watch an Ozark series, uh, episode, I have to go into a military grade lockdown. Absolutely no light could be in my apartment at all, or you're literally going to miss like 75% of the show. So the low light to me did not provide any sort of ambiance or tone to the, to the piece at all. So the low light was just kind of off, slightly off-putting. Um, some sort of shaky character relationships, which we'll discuss in the plot synopsis. Just a couple flip-floppy things from episode to episode, and I think the plot can be a little tighter. Remember to give season uh, one, I think, a B plus. I'll give this a B. Still thoroughly enjoy it, um, but just again, low light and some of the character relationships that I'll talk about now. So overall, I think I give it a B. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Not enough to bump it up to the highest grade of the A, but. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Think it could be a little better. I, I but I do think it, think it's done done pretty well. And so, the end of first season, we ended up with the Snells. Again, we have the Snells, who are like the more predominant local crime family in the Ozarks. Then we have the Langmores, who's kind of like the ragtag criminals. Then we have the Mexican drug cart, the Navarro uh, drug cartel, which is a big presence. And then Marty laundering money. So a lot of different criminality angles. And they had agreed to basically, the cartel loses a bunch of money um, shipping product over the borders. The Snells produce a bunch of heroin. Um, and then, and so they're going to build a casino. And the Snells are going to provide the heroin. And the cartel won't lose money. Or, and they'll be able to launder their money through the casino. So everyone's win-win. Everyone's then Del Rio calls uh, Darlene a redneck. She blows his head off. So that's where the season two kind of starts. And so reparations, and I watched this one, I wrote some notes down pretty much after each episode, and then the last couple ones just throughout, but just a couple notes. Reparations are paid to the cartel with the, from the Snells with Ash's life. So Ash is like their main, main henchman for the Snells, and you, there's another uh, main character in this season, Helen, who's the lawyer for the cartel, basically tells uh, uh, Marty... Uh, hey, you know, what, what, what type of offer are you going to offer us for blowing Del Rio's head off? So they talk about Marty suggests money, and then uh, 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 Jacob Snell's like, hey, Ash, you know, get the boys ready, we're going to go to war. Clocks him over the head with a log and then stabs him through the spine with like a fire, like a fire poker thing. And so basically Jacob realizes the, the cartel wants them to kill one of their own because, because they killed their guy. And so Darlene, throughout the season, is not happy that Ash was killed, but Jacob was appeasing the cartel. Kate Langmore gets parole. So in the first season, you, you, Ruth visits Kate in jail quite a bit. We don't really get much from Kate. He gets out this season, and he plays a pretty prominent role. Wilkes helps with the casino deal. Again, Wilkes is like, Charles Wilkes is like the... He's a local rich guy that can help help influence politics and a well-connected guy. So he's kind of like the kind of on the outs of the criminal world, but relationship with Wendy, but can get things done. So he decides to help with the casino deal. The Kansas City mob blows a dude's hand off to, to, to deter casino. So we meet another group of, of criminality in this episode, 
or this season, the Kansas City Mob. So basically, I forget exactly why the Kansas City Mob doesn't want the casino, but something with union work, they want their guys to be employed. So for one of the one of the trucking dudes, they, they you know pull in front of him in front of the road and shoot his hand off and so they send, send a message to whoever the gaming commission is to approve the, the casino. And really the main plot development through the whole season is, is, is this casino going to get approved? So you meet the Kansas City mob. It's run by Frank. Buddy, Buddy helps set a meet. Basically, again, Buddy is the guy who sold the birds their house. He's living in the basement until he dies. He ends up dying this season. But Buddy has clearly has some criminal past where he knows uh, Frank from the Kansas City mob back in the day. So he sets up a meeting with Marty, and Marty agrees to basically, you know, support the casino and every single bit of construction, building, employment will come through, come through the unions or come through the, the mob-associated people. So, so that's pretty much, pretty much the only Kansas City mob until the, until the later part of the season. Wendy frames a senator with a hooker. Rachel ran off with money and gets arrested. So basically to influence votes, and there's a couple, again, legal processes to, to get the, the casino approved. So Wendy frames some senators sleeping with a hooker, blackmails them, gets a vote that way. And at the end of, end of season one, Rachel, the blue cat owner, one of the businesses, again, the birds have a lickety splits, a strip club, blue cat lodge, just like a marina, bar, restaurant. They have a funeral home, and now they're building a casino. Rachel was the owner of the Blue Cat. She really had no criminal intent whatsoever. It's kind of in a fucked up situation. Takes, takes I think it's 300000 and just leaves town. She gets in a car accident. She's doing some drugs or something. And basically, the Roy Petty, the main FBI agent in the series, has her on like a, just, it looked just like a, like a drunk driving wreck but has a lot of things on her where she can go to jail for a long time. So now she's under FBI, she's, she's cooperating, and she wears a wire throughout most of the season. This, a senator kills himself. The dude that was framed, I believe, blows his head off. No, I think was, this was a different senator, not the guy that was framed by Wendy. But basically, Wilkes influences one senator, basically by having him you know, not show up for the vote. He's not gonna vote for the casino, but he's just not gonna show up to vote. And so the day after that, he literally goes into his office, blows his head off, and it, it, some, some sort of thing with depression. So again, not, not a super convincing plot line there. Jonah opens a bank account with a fake identity. So from the end of season one, they were going to run. They have these fake passports, Michael Fleming. So he, he opens a bank account. Basically, Charlotte calls in as his mom. He's, a minor needs a, an adult to open a bank account. But he starts laundering money throughout the season. The Snells burn Wilkes' boat in retaliation. Um, I forget it, in retaliation for exactly what I kind of forget. Ruth destroys boats to get a new business. So Ruth is, they're trying to find new ways to launder money because the FBI shuts down all of the, the three businesses they have right away. And they get throughout the season, it's not clear where the money's going. Right? They, they end up with 50 million from the first season, they have to launder it. Towards the end of the season, you realize they have about like 43 million and change left. So it's like kind of sloppy. It's like uh, the cartel's not gonna oops a daisy seven million away, but they have to spend money to get this shit running. So it's just not again the finances of this whole thing is not very clear to me. But uh, Ruth basically, there's some boat, another business they're going to invest in. She just causes a bunch of water damage by running boats around and just flooding all of the marina. So so the guy that runs this this other dock has to has to take uh, Marty's money. And Ruth's kind of like running Marty's front office type of deal, and their relationship again flips back and forth, just kind of like season one. Rachel tells Marty about the FBI. Basically, then she's wearing a wire, and you know she she just alerts him. Wyatt questions his dad's death throughout the season. Wyatt's really confused as to what exactly happened to his dad. He finds that out at the end. R Ruth ends up telling him. FBI raids the Bird's house, finds Charlotte's money. And Jonah has shell companies, lol. But the FBI raids Bird's house. They get enough, they, enough off of Ruth's uh, or Ruth's wire or uh, Rachel's wiretap gets something from Ruth, which is enough for a uh, search warrant. So they raid, raid the house, and then they find when in season one, when uh, Jonah and Charlotte were stuffing the money into the walls, they took ten thousand, five thousand each. So they find that money, and that's a li little hiccup. And Jonah has, has shell companies now. Through his bank account, he has offshore's accounts now. 
taken after the, taken after the family business. The Snells think about an heir. Basically, Darlene really wants to. Again, there's local entrenched crime family, but they have no kids. So Darlene's really like, you know, who? They're they're kind of I don't know mid 60s. So they're kind of like, who do we leave our our? What have we worked for? If we're not going to give it to somebody. So she wants a a baby boy throughout this uh, out the season. Buddy helps Wendy burn the poppies. Ruth is waterboarding. So basically. After the FBI raids Marty's house, they're like, they're going to raid the Snells, and if there's anything here, it's going to destroy the casino deal, and if the casino deal gets killed, the cartels get killing us all. So basically, the, the Snells will not burn their poppy, because again, they're really, they're really, you know, entrenched land, family generations type of deal. And so Buddy, he goes to, he goes with Wendy, Wendy's going to go talk to Darlene about adoption, adopting a kid, and he just burns the entire field. And so, and he, he died, Buddy dies, literally, literally dies in the car on the ride home. So that was Buddy's send off. But Ruth is waterboarded by the cartel, just basically, you know, is she loyal? Is she, do we have to knock her off? She passes the waterboarding test, so the, she passes the cartel's test, and the FBI raids the Snell's land. So right after they burn the poppy fields, the Snell's aren't happy, but it ends up saving them, because again, that heroin production probably wouldn't be too good for the FBI to find out. But they also find a bunch of bones on the land as well. And so they're, they're uh, she's basically saying, you know, are these dead bodies? And they, they had, again, the local sheriff, Sheriff Nix, he's under the Snell's control, kind of. So they desecrate, they dig up old, old bodies and kind of like switch out the bones. So it looks like it's just all the bodies that they buried was just like a family burial ground. And so they, they, the Snells and the, the birds pass the FBI raids. Rachel kisses Marty to keep him from incrimination after funeral. Basically, again, she that that's how she tells Marty about the FBI. Is Marty's about to say something and she kisses him, like but he's like shut up, because she's got the wire and then like shows him the wire. I just had it written down a little earlier. Um, Mason kidnaps Wendy. So again, Mason was the preacher who the the Snells literally cut open and you never heard from her again. But she kidnaps Wendy and it's like, you know. The, the child, oh, Mason's kid gets uh, taken from him because he's preaching on the corner. He's, he's homeless now. So Child Protective Services takes his kid. So he kidnaps Wendy and it's basically like, Marty, don't call the FBI, don't call the Snells, don't call anybody. Give me back my child. His name's Ezekiel or I'm going to kill Wendy. And so uh, Kate and Ruth botch a robbery. So... Yeah. Okay. So that's the, that's the point where they. So Marty gets the gets the gets the kid. Ezekiel goes there. They have a standoff. Mason's kind of losing it again. He's a Jesus freak. He's you know. Wendy tells him you know you just went into that gas station where he got shot in season or in season one. You went in there to die. Not not God. God didn't save you. And then um, they have a standoff. Marty gets the kid. All's going well. And then. Uh, basically Mason's just like, you know, fuck that, I got my kid, the kid's not the same, because the kid's crying, but Mason's just losing it, takes, takes, uh, Wendy hostage again, Wendy stabs him in the leg with like a, with like a screwdriver, uh, Mason has a gun, he drops it, Marty picks it up, and kills Mason, so Marty, Marty has second thoughts throughout the season about dropping bodies on Mason, even though he kidnapped his wife, Kate and Ruth botch a robbery, they go to steal some, they were offered 10k to steal some expensive navigation system off a boat. And this is one of the scenes where I said, Ruth, Ruth the, the, Ruth's characterization throughout this episode was a little too dramatic for me. Like every line that there has to be a fuck or a damn it or you know, this is, it's a little girl, you know, maybe 18 years old, 5'2", but again, you know, bossing people around all the time. It's just like, it's just not a super believable characterization and a lot of unneeded swear words just, just in the writing. But one of the scenes, again, after they botched the robber, she's just, like, crying to her dad. Cades, her father, again, more and more established criminal. But that there's a scene where she's just, like, crying really aggressively. It's just, like, cringeworthy. It's just, like, not, not convincing acting or writing. But but Kate really wants to get Marty's mil, 50 millions. Rachel ODs on heroin spiked by Darlene. So Darlene is upset at the cartel puts fentanyl in the heroin, it kills a bunch of people. A uh, dealer named Amos gets tortured. Basically, the cartel tortures him because it's his area where a bunch of people overdose and the cartel wants good product and good reviews, 
those Yelp reviews for those drugs smuggling cartels, you need good Yelp reviews. <laughs> but just a local dealer, Amos, gets tortured because he admits to spiking it, which is inert things. But it's 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 Darlene who's causing who's causing sabotage. Charlotte stole a book for Wyatt. They're in a bookstore. Wyatt likes some book, and Charlotte's now getting into criminality. And Charlotte wants wants to leave the family in the season. Jonah's account to donate one point eight million. So again, when he opens up this first bank account, it's for five thousand dollars. And then later in the season, Wendy, who wants to donate to Wilkes anonymously to use the account. Now we have a, a kid with a $1.8 million deposit. I mean, that seems like that would be a little, you know, the FBI gets tipped off or the IRS for 10000 So we have one, one initial deposit for 5000 The next thing we're doing with, with the money from Jonah, and this season Jonah's like doing homework for people. So maybe making, you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks a week or something. But now $1.8 million deposit just, just coasts right through. But they use it to, to donate to Charles Wilkes anonymously and get him complicit in the crime. Marty helps Petty's mom shoot dope? Question mark. It's not exactly sure. Like Marty doesn't shoot up Petty's mom, but the FBI agent who's grilling, who's got Rachel under the wire, on a wire, um, to get her off him off of Rachel's back. He, there's just again, he shows him some video of either somebody else shooting up his mom. His mom is a heroin addict or something, addicted to drugs. And it's not sure if he like he helps his mom relapse or just shows uh, Agent Petty some video of his mom doing drugs. Not exactly sure the play there, but for some reason, Marty has some sort of drug drug hold over Petty's mom and, and shows it to Agent Petty to get him off of Rachel's back. Um, the Snells get lit up. At an end of an episode, they're leaving to some fried chicken cookout and the cartels just, just blow them away. Well, they, they think, you think that. They hit them with like 300 rounds. Next episode, uh, Jacob was just hit once in the shoulder. So, <laughs> again, after like 5,000 rounds, not 5,000, but like, pfft, in the scene, it's got to be 50 to 100. And they're hit once, and it's getting one, one sedan versus three SUVs, and they're just mowing them down, one, one bullet through the shoulder. Nice. Okay. <laughs> but Charlotte wants out. She's seeking a, uh, I don't know, I'm afraid, I forget the word, but emancipation when you're under 18 but your parents agree to you to, to let you be an adult so like 16 or 17 you can just get signed some papers and be a, a legal minor or something so Cade robs Lickety Splits lol it, Cade is Ruth's dad Ruth's running Lickety Splits and Cade's not happy that that Ruth's fucking up the boat stuff so he robs the the, the, lick, or the strip club at, that his daughter works at which I thought was actually kind of funny <laughs> And Wyatt gets into Mizzou. Throughout the uh, season, Wyatt Langmore, he's kind of the one with, again, another more of those scenes, Ruth's going into, uh, Wyatt gets expelled because uh, Jonah forgot to do one of the, he's doing people's homework, forgot to do it one day, he's getting beat up, Wyatt steps in, Wyatt gets expelled, and, and I think Marty gets Wyatt back into school. But another scene where Ruth goes into the principal's office and she's going to tell him how it is as a 5'3 girl swearing. It's just like, it's not convincing. As a, as a school administrator, would not care. So, you know, just like that. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, be very aggressive here and do what I say kind of character really just doesn't work for me. But he gets into Mizzou. And they have the, some scene, scenes about his, his essay about the, the Langmore curse, but he gets in. And, and uh, Ruth, Ruth ends up telling him that, that she was the one that killed his father because they were going to kill Marty. The gaming commission won't, uh, won't all the casino, won't allow the casino to unionize. So again, Marty made a deal with the Kansas City mob, but to get the vote passed, if the vote doesn't get passed, the cartel is going to kill him. So he's just like, yep, commission, there'll be no union. And so now, clearly into season three, that's going to cause some problems at the end. The, the Kansas City mob, I believe, blows up either his office. It doesn't look like his house, but the Kansas City mob blows up a building. I'm assuming it's, it's, it's Marty's office. Darlene poisons Jacob. Again, uh, no, it, it, in the scene, you kind of think Jacob was going to kill Darlene or Darlene was going to kill Jacob, but Darlene puts uh, rice in or no, another poison into Jacob's coffee from some ground-up cherry nuts or something. Cade kills the FBI agent Petty. So he's trying to, uh, Cade's trying to just get a way out. He's trying to give him something on, on Marty. He doesn't have anything Petty doesn't already know. Petty's mouthing off to Cade about his hillbilly family. 
Katie whacks him over the head with like a tackle box or like a frying pan type of deal. Petty's like, uh-oh, you just assaulted a federal officer. And Katie's like, oh, fuck. So he, so he kills him. His brute force uh, beats him down. And so Petty's dead, and he hides the car. Some hunters at the end of the season find the car, so clearly that's going to lead to some more blowback. But he's dead, or but he gets killed. Uh, the Cade, Darlene gets Mason's baby. We'll just keep going. The Cade kills Petty. Darlene gets Mason's baby. Basically, because Darlene wants the kid. Mason's now dead from from the birds interaction, and so they're like, there's was, was a pretty predictable plot development. But they get Mason's kid to grow up with, and Jacob is now dead. Cade assaults Charlotte and is paid to leave town. So again, Charlotte, after wanting to be emancipated, is hanging out with Wyatt a lot at, at the Langmore. They have a couple trailers. But hanging around there a lot, Cade shows up one day and assaults Charlotte, basically like, you know, if I kidnap Charlotte, can we make uh, Marty pay money? Ruth pulls up with a shotgun again, and scares off, um, scares off Cade. Wendy decides to pay uh, Cade five hundred thousand to leave town, and it's really a setup with the cartel. Wendy's out here banging hits in season two, so again says meets in a diner. Hey Cade, if you leave town, here's five hundred thousand. And Cade's like, sure, I'm on my way, heading out of town, just coasting along, singing the song. He's a free bird. And then someone pulls over in front of him in the front of the highway, and it's the cartel, and they kill him. And at the same time, it's the grand opening for the casino. It gets approved. After a while, again, that's like the main development throughout the season. So they get approved, and they're at the grand opening. And, and Wendy is Helen, who's the ruthless lawyer of the cartel. is on the phone, looks over at Wendy, gives him the head nod that Kate has been whacked. So you can tell Marty's kind of like learning that on the fly. He's like, oh, my wife's out here sending hits. That's pretty solid. And so, so Marty's not too happy at the absolute end, and the casino opens, and they decide not to run. So after all of this, once the casino got open, they were going to uh, skim or siph siphon a little bit of money, uh, have some decoys, like people using their credit cards and cell phones around town, and the, the cartels in from Chicago to the Ozarks to make sure the shit works. And once the shit works, they're going to lay off a little bit, and so they're planning to run throughout the season. And at the end, Wendy's basically like, we're not going to run. So that, that's really the end of the season. They take a picture, and that's it. So overall, entertaining. But again, the relationship between Marty and Wendy this season was kind of like, they said, that's, that's a draw I liked of the show. It was the whole family knew what was going on, which was kind of a new angle. But this season, we have a couple back and forth of Marty making decisions. Then Wendy gets upset. Wendy makes decisions. Then Marty gets upset. So a little, little insecurity characterization development I did not like. Again, I liked, I liked Charlotte, I liked Jonah, I liked Marty for the most part, Wendy for the most part. Ruth was a little off-putting this season. Uh, Kate was pretty convincing. Pretty much everybody else was pretty convincing and liked it. Um, and that's pretty much it. So Petty's dead, uh, Cade's dead. They have another brother, Three. He doesn't play big roles. And that's pretty much it. Also, in the realtor from season one, he is now dating one of the strippers at Lick of these Splits. And so... And overall enjoyable. Did not like the low light. And the, the, the actual development of financing throughout the season is not exactly clear. Because I mean, they get the $50 million, and then they have to spend money to do stuff. There's another operational count. And then they're putting $1.8 million, and they're spending $50,000 for a seat. So it's like, it's not exactly clear if they just, they're dead broke with $50 million of cartel money, how they can just casually spend stuff like this. So it's just like, uh, kind, of, kind of just like question marks. So little the plot could be a little tighter. Some of the uh, character relationships could be a little developed a little better. I did not like the low light. So overall, B. So thank you for watching my review of Ozark season two. I'll probably watch the rest of this. I think there's four seasons of this. If not, go back to All American or find something else. But thoroughly enjoy it, and thanks for watching.